This is part two of a several part series detailing Hyper-V, the same virtualization platform that powers Azure, its virtual machines, and Xbox. This video also continues the tutorial, Manage Windows Workgroup Servers Remotely Without ADDS. Here, we will cover the installation and configuration of Hyper-V on a single standalone Windows Server Core 2025. This standalone server will serve to mimic a typical physical Dell, HPE, Lenovo, or virtual AWS, Azure, or other cloud provider virtual machine. Before the installation and configuration of Hyper-V on Server Core, it is assumed that Windows Server Core 2019, 2022, or 2025 is installed on compatible hardware or in a virtual or cloud environment that supports nested virtualization. There is an administrative workstation from which Hyper-V and the server can be managed. All computer names can be resolved via DNS, and the underlying network infrastructure is configured correctly. With Windows Server Core, we have three methods to install the Hyper-V role. Via PowerShell with the add windows feature commandlet, via Server Manager from an administrative workstation, and via Windows Admin Center from an administrative workstation. On the server, where Server Core is installed and in Server Configuration, as config, select option 15 to exit into PowerShell. Use the add windows feature commandlet to add the Hyper-V role. Reboot when prompted. Following the reboot, log in. Again, in sconfig, select option 15 to exit into PowerShell. Verify that the Hyper-V role was successfully installed with the git-windows feature commandlet. The install state should read installed. At the administrative workstation and server manager, all servers. Right-click the server and select Add Roles and Features. At the Server Selection tab, ensure the correct server is selected from the server pool. Select the Hyper-V role, click Add Features, and click Next twice. For the Hyper-V virtual switches, migration, and data stores, accept the defaults by clicking Next. At the Confirmation tab, click Install. After the roles and features are installed, close the wizard. Right-click the server, restart the server, and click OK to restart. After the server restarts, in Server Manager, Hyper-V, ensure the server name is shown. At the Windows Admin Center homepage, select the server. In the left column, select Virtual Machines, and click Set Up Virtual Machine Management. Click the Restart Server checkbox and click Set Up. After a few minutes, to allow for the Hyper-V role to be installed, refresh your browser. You can further verify by clicking Roles and Features and noticing the Hyper-V role is showing as installed. As we did in the video titled Install and Configure, Hyper-V on Windows Server 2025, we're going to mount a 1 terabyte NTFS volume and a 2 terabyte REFS volume to folder paths. Later, when we install Hyper-V into a failover cluster using a cluster shared volume, it will make sense why we mounted the volumes to folder paths instead of using drive letters. You can, however, use drive letters if desired. From the administrative workstation, Server Manager, File and Storage Services, Disks, select the one terabyte drive under the server. Right click, Bring Online if necessary, and acknowledge the Bring Disk Online dialog box. Right click, select New Volume, and click Next. Verify the selected server and disk. Acknowledge the Offline or Uninitiated Disk dialog box. Specify the volume size. Select 
the following folder radio button and navigate to the target folder. Format the volume and provide a meaningful label. Click Create to create and mount the volume. Perform the same series of procedures for the 2 terabyte volume, but format it using REFS. In Server Manager, select Volumes and verify the mounted folders. Close or minimize Server Manager. Since the previous Hyper-V video already covered configuring Hyper-V using Hyper-V Manager, we'll focus on using Windows Admin Center. Select the server, and in the left column, under Overview, click Settings. In the Hyper-V Host Settings section, under General, specify the path for the virtual machines and disks. Click Browse, C Drive. In Windows Admin Center, a single click select a folder as denoted by the check mark. A double click opens the folder to reveal subfolders. For the virtual machines path, select the target folder. Repeat the process for the virtual hard disks path. When finished, click Save. Under the Enhanced Session Mode, check the checkbox as per your preference or policy. Under NUMA Spanning, Live Migration, and Storage Migration, leave the default settings for now. We'll cover creating virtual machines and virtual switches in another video. I hope you enjoyed this video, learned something new, and found it useful. If you have any feedback, corrections, or suggestions, please let me know in the comments below. Please like, subscribe, and pass it on to others. And I thank you for watching. Oh, 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 oh,